Aha Comfort. Many of us hit the roads this time of year to visit friends and family for the holidays. One of the most nerve-wracking parts of a road trip can be sharing the road with 18-wheelers, especially if the truck drivers are speeding. Steve Owings and his wife Susan founded Road Safe America after their son died when a semi crushed his car from behind. Now they're working to make the road safer for all of us. Good morning, and Steve, tell us about Road Safe America and what you're working to accomplish right now. Road Safe America has been working on making big rigs safer in this country um, for over 10 years. Uh, the thing that we're focused on right now is getting the public to weigh in on a proposed rule from the U.S. DOT that were, uh, the proposed rule would only require new future manufactured big rigs to set their speed governor at a reasonable top speed despite the fact that the vast majority of these trucks on the highway going back to the 90s have had that capability already built in. And by the way, the reason it's been standard for that long is because so many countries even back in the 90s required that they be set. The U.S. is the only leading country without such a rule and it is high time that we get this rule applied to existing, not just new trucks. Your organization says that this uh, new requirement can actually be better for the trucking business. How's that? Well, there's no question about it. It's more profitable uh, as well as more uh, as safer. Um, the, the leading uh, trucking companies from a safety standpoint in this country already use them and have done so for decades. Uh, and they'll all tell you that not only are they in fewer crashes, but they'll tell you they're especially in fewer crashes that they're liable for. They're simply in better control of their vehicles. So they save the costs involved in that, and they also save money on fuel and maintenance because their tires and their brakes both last longer by putting less stress on them. So it's, it's, the equipment's already there, it's more profitable, and it's definitely safer. How do we get the Department of Transportation to move on this? Well, we've made that as simple as it can be. It just takes a few minutes. If you'll go to roadsafeamerica.org, we've got a, a simple way to, to link to the DOT comment page. And obviously, we hope your, your audience will say whatever uh, they feel on this, but one of the points that we hope they'll adamantly make is this obviously should apply to existing, not just new trucks. It, the analogy we use is seat belts. It, it's as if the DOT looked at wearing seat belts and it took them 10 years to conclude that wearing them indeed would save lives and prevent injuries, but then went on to say, consequently, we think they should be war worn in future cars, even though they've been there for decades. It's a fair analogy and it's crazy. We deserve these safety benefits now. Susan, if the DOT does expand the proposed speed limiter rule, what kind of results could we see? Well, we think it's reasonable to assume we can expect the same results that other countries have seen. And that is, for instance, in Ontario and in the UK, they've seen a 25% reduction in crashes and deaths. In our country, sadly, there's a trend in the opposite direction. The, we have an increase in 44% in crashes, 50% in injuries, and 20% in de I'm sorry, 50% in injuries and 20% in deaths. So we think that it's time for us to benefit from the safety ben from the safety advantage of the speed limiters. If this requirement would increase safety, what is um, what's the argument against it? Well, it's hard to believe that anybody would argue against it. And in fact, the American Trucking Association is with us on this. But some truckers feel like it would affect their pay scale, and so that's because they are paid by the mile. Their their incentive is to drive as far and as fast as they can to make more money. The other argument we hear is that speed limiters could cause speed differentials on the highways. With the trucks going slower, there might be a threat of cars running into the back of the truck, but I don't think many of us are really afraid of a slow-moving truck. What is a worry to us is the idea that, well, the fact that it takes a truck twice as long to stop, and so the d real differential is stopping distance. If, if the truck is going 80 miles per hour and the car is going 80 miles per hour, it cannot stop in the same amount of time. Steve and Susan, thanks for your time. And for more information, go to roadsafeamerica.org.